The questions is, if humans were not responsible for the first civilization on Earth, which creatures were the first to be here on Earth, and what signs will such intelligent creatures' civilization would have left on Earth several millions of years before Adam and Eve were made? And would these signs still be observable in our world today? More questions that will come up is, what will be the scientific signature of the evolution of such species? And how would they differ from other known creatures and geological events? Since we know from the Bible that humans were created from the Earth's substances, these creatures, where were they from and how did they evolve or were created? Is it even feasible to know between an industrial cause and a climate event? It is postulated that humans may have been present on this Earth for about 300,000 years while life on this earth itself has existed for 3.5 billion years. A simple calculation will give a balance of 3 billion, 499 million and 700,000 years before human life ever began on the earth. These number of years that is unaccounted for is more than sufficient time for numerous pre-human life civilizations and industrialization to rise and die. According to the Silurian hypothesis, such ancient civilizations may have come and gone extinct, and their remains may have been buried beneath the earth for a long period of time. The questions now is, could we still discover proofs that there were ancient aliens who might established an industrial civilization on the earth far before our own? This may look ridiculous, but I bet you, it is not. If you consider that fact that we have only existed for a moment on the geological time scale, and the present industrial civilization, what we have on the earth, has only been around for a small portion of that moment. The remnants of our culture wouldn't last very long if people disappeared from the earth tomorrow. Since according to our knowledge of evolution, human beings have only existed for around 300,000 years, we need to consider who the humans are, really. The Latin term for humans is Homo sapiens, which means, intelligent man. All we have as history of our world is just about 1% of the history of the Earth itself and within a small portion of that history, we have had the capability to leave the planet, as well as to obliterate other species, and even destroy ourselves in the process through wars and conflicts. As humans, we have had such a wide-ranging and significant impact on the Earth that we have added a new geological era to its history. The human epoch, or simply the human era, which is known as the Anthropocene. However, what remains of human civilization from the Anthropocene era and its expected future is what researchers are trying to find. According to a recent NASA research, there are a number of reasons humans won't leave fossil evidence just as the dinosaurs did. The reason is the fact that most people have their bodies burned or buried in the soil, in which their bones will naturally break down. According to the research, there may not even be any significant human fossils left after a few million years. And according to another study, the paleocene eocene Thermal Maximum PTM, eras, such the one that occurred 56 million years ago, would have left behind remnants of a long-gone civilization, such as increased amounts of coal and oxygen. In the book, The Time Traders, by Andre Norton, it was suggested that glaciers, volcanic eruptions, and deterioration may have eliminated the majority of the Earth's prehistoric advanced civilization's physical artifacts. This is this reason we may not have seen any trace of civilizations. Now, the question that is often asked is, since the present Earth will be destroyed at the end of time as the Abrahamic religion of Islam, Christianity and Judaism believes, with all the life and structures on it, is it feasible that other sentient species that will come won't find any signs of humanity when they roam the planet in the future? If so, is it feasible that humans weren't the first society with a level of intelligence on par with ours? The Silurian hypothesis, which was developed by Adam Frank and Gavin Schmidt, tests the capacity of contemporary science to find signs of a previously high-tech civilization that may have flourished millions of years ago. It's just like allusion to Doctor Who, who suggests that intelligent reptiles predate humans as a race on the Earth. This actually aligns with the fact that even the Bible states that animals were created days before man was created. And remember, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years with man. 
Who knows whether the days that was talked about in Genesis actually means thousands or so years. However, their test conclusion is that although our impact on the planet will likely be noticeable, it will be difficult to tell it apart from previous events in the geological record in many respects. Although, there are things that will make it difficult to discover direct evidence from our civilization. Some anomalies in the sediments, such microplastics and nuclear waste, may contain indirect sources to improve such evidence. According to the late astronomer Peter Nielsen, humans and other sentient species may persist for a very long period after our modern civilization has vanished. Some will remain on a primitive level, while others will fly through space. However, if enough time passes between the civilizations, no remnants will remain. You know, the ground is beaten down by rain, cold, and wind. Some continents drift apart and are even driven down on the seabed, melted into the core, and then pushed up to the surface again. While some mountains will form and then get flattened away. There are oceans that will flood the continents and rearranges natures and artificial structures also. Then you also have the comets and asteroids that can cause global disaster. Peter Nielsen also asserts that time will erase all of our remnants. Some new civilizations or races will discover remnants of earlier ones, while others won't even be aware of the presence of humans here on the Earth. It is natural that durable things would gradually deteriorate, due to weathering and wear and tear over time. And anything organic can easily decompose and mix with the soil. Sand, for example, would be formed from glass and porcelain, while unique ore deposits would be formed from steel girders. Deorbiting satellites would cause them to burn up in space. On the ocean below, shipwrecks would gradually disintegrate and became part of the seabed. Can we then reasonably expect humanids to appear and disappear over the next hundreds of millions or even billions of years? If so, can civilizations arise again elsewhere in the cosmos? And if so, wouldn't this raise the likelihood that intelligent life exists elsewhere in the cosmos? As in, the alien stories that we read in books and watch in the movies may be possible after all? If intelligent life on the Earth were necessary, would intelligence be advantageous from an evolutionary standpoint? Future evolution will be to better fit your niche. Thus, it won't be necessary in a stable environment, just when abrupt shifts like, say, climate change. Although, according to some perspective, humans may be the first, the last, and the only intelligent high-tech species to ever exist on Earth, because it may take a very long time for a new intelligent race to emerge. This implies that nobody will be seeking for our fossils, whether they are present or not. At least not any time soon. The Silurian Epoch is the third period of the Paleozoic Era in geological time. It lasted from the end of the Ordovician period to the start of the Devonian period beginning 443.8 million years and ending 419.2 million years ago. The highlands of the continents of the world were much lower during this time, while the sea level was rising. The massive glacier from the late Ordovician ice period melted, causing a sharp rise in sea level. Numerous faunal groups were able to recover from the extinction of the late Ordovician times due to the abrupt changes in the climate. Shallow waters swamp vast areas of many of these continents, and coral reefs that resembled mounds were ubiquitous, spreading all over. There were many fish, due to the inflow of water. In contrast to the continental interiors, which remained infertile throughout this time, vascular plants started to take over coastal lowlands. The important events of the Silurian period life on the land. The first life emerged from the water and populated the land during this time. The increased ozone produced by photosynthetic water plants that shielded the terrestrial environment from ultraviolet rays, promoting the growth of organisms that could withstand desiccation. The earliest vascular plants. The Silurian period saw the appearance of the first plant, having an internal vascular canal. Due to the fact that food and gases could not be transferred by plants to other portions of the structure, the size of the structure could expand significantly. The initial insects. It is believed that insects were likely the first animals to emerge from the sea during the Silurian era. The first jawed vertebrates. 
The emergence of the first fish with jaws during the Silurian age allowed for much better prediction and ultimately led to the emergence of modern vertebrates. The climate of the Silurian period. There was a warmer environment during the Silurian epoch. The sea levels rose as a result of the glaciers melting. There were locations where the land was rising as well, despite the water level rising. As the continental plates collided, mountains began to form, which is what caused this. In these locations, the oceans either retreated from the coastlines or dried up in the shallow areas. The coastal plants also had to survive in the land-based habitats or perish. You see, the first vertebrates, or animals with soft cartilage bones were the ones that existed. In fact, it was animals with jaws and genuine bones that were swimming in water by the end of the Silurian era. These creatures would eventually rule the seas as fish and sea monsters. The Terrestrial Ecosystem The first truly terrestrial ecosystem of that time was the most important progressive development throughout this period. The Silurian period saw the earliest fossil remains of vascular plants, or land plants with tissue capable of transporting food. The vascular plants were straightforward plants without distinct stalks and leaves. A very basic early terrestrial society with primitive plant producers, millipede herbivores, centipede and spider carnivores, worm detritivores, and fungal decomposers had evolved by the middle of the Silurian period. There were small plants, arthropods like trigonotarbids and myriapods, which were from the water's edge, and some small plants that were made up of the mid-late Silurian terrestrial biota. Although, they did not leave a fossil record, the fungi, nematodes, and possibly earthworms were also believed to be present during this period. Thank you for your support.